Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Julianne and on this channel I love talking about my life as a small business owner and flight attendant and of course making crochet tutorials. And today I have a super fun tutorial for this adorable Christmas tree hat and chick as well as this penguin and Santa hat. And of course you can interchange it so the Santa hat can go on the chick or the Christmas tree can go on the penguin. But yeah, regardless, I'm so excited to be sharing this tutorial because the holidays are coming up so if you have um, any markets or you're looking for some fun gift ideas for your loved ones then maybe this can be the project for you. I'll be splitting this video into part one and part two. In part one, I'm going to be teaching you how to make the chick and this Christmas tree hat. And then in part two, I'll be teaching you how to make this penguin along with the Santa hat. And I hope that it's a helpful video or helpful two videos. Make sure to watch to the end. And if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. So let's get crocheting. So what you'll need for the chick is some yellow and mustard yarn. For me, I like using Premier um, Parfait Chunky. This is the color Sunshine. And I also have the color Mustard. And alongside that, I use 12 millimeter safety eyes. But you can use whatever size you want. I just prefer this size. And I use, oops, there's the truck. For my hook, I like to use the eight millimeter, the no, number eight five millimeter hook. And of course, you'll need some scissors and a tapestry needle. A larger one is better for chenille yarn for sure. And then you'll also need some polyfill stuffing. So any stuffing or cotton will do. I also forgot to mention that I would recommend some some stitch markers so that we can make sure we know how many stitches and rounds we're doing because we're gonna be using continuous rounds for this project. We're gonna start by making a slip knot and I personally like to use slip knots with chenille yarn because a magic ring, it doesn't let the yarn like get as tight. So I love, I like using slip knots. So one slip knot and then chain two. The first chain is gonna be our connector and I would put the stitch marker here and in the first chain that we made so skip the second chain start in the first chain we're gonna do eight single crochets all around and for amigurumi it looks much better if you make the yarn under and then over so that'll make it a lot tighter and a lot cuter as well so we're gonna do eight I did four and then I'm gonna kind of go on the other side of this tail so that it's a bit more even. Now we have eight single crochets in the first round and we have the stitch marker here so we know where to start for the next round. So we'll go on to round two. For round two, we're gonna increase in each stitch. So in total, we're going to have 16 single crochets. So go in the first stitch and two single crochets. Let's go all the way around. So that was round two, ending with 16 single crochets. Now let's move our stitch marker back to the loop. And for round three, we're gonna do one single crochet and then increase. One single crochet, increase all the way around and we'll be ending with 24 single crochets. So 
there's one single crochet and then the next stitch increase so two single crochets we'll do that all the way around Now that's the end of row three with 24 single crochets. For round four, five, and six, so for the next three rounds, we're gonna do single crochet in each stitch. So three rounds of single crochets. So we just completed row six and we still have 24 stitches all around. Now moving on to row seven. This is where it gets a little tricky because we're doing a no sew pattern. So we're gonna have the arms a part of this row. So just pay a bit more attention in this row. We're gonna start off by doing five single crochets. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now we're gonna be making the arms. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the next two stitches using the front loops only. And my recommendation is that if you have some spare stitch markers, I would put stitch markers on the back loops of the next two stitches because in row eight we're going to be coming around and using those stitches for the next round hopefully i'll make sense later but for now i recommend at least knowing where these two stitches are now for the arm what we're going to do in the next stitch we're going to do a slip stitch half double crochet double crochet all in the same stitch so, slip stitch, half double crochet, and for this I just use yarn over, and then a double crochet. Again, yarn over, pull a loop, yarn over, pull two loops, yarn over, pull the last two loops. Okay, so that's in that one stitch, and then in the next stitch, we're going to do the same thing but in reverse. So we're going to do a double crochet, half double crochet, and then a slip stitch. So double crochet, remember this is only in the front loop, and then a half double crochet, and then a slip stitch. So this is what the wing, the arm, kind of looks like. And now you just go right into the next stitch. And in the next stitch, we are going to do a single crochet increase. So two single crochets in the next stitch. So we're gonna do one and two. Yeah, just make sure you know which ones are the single crochet, which one is part of the arm, because in the next row, we're gonna have to go through the, the increase as well as the two stitches in the back. So later in the next round, I'll try to be as clear as possible so you don't miss any stitches or do any extra stitches. Now, we're gonna continue by doing seven single crochets. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. So after the seven single crochets, we're gonna do a single crochet increase again. So two stitches in the next single crochet space. And now we are going to do another arm slash wing the same way that we did on the other side. I'm not gonna put stitch markers, but if you want, you can. Again, in the front loop, we're gonna do a slip stitch, a half double crochet, a double crochet and do the reverse in the next stitch so double crochet half double crochet and a slip stitch all in the front loop and those are the two little wings now we're going to continue by doing five single crochets one two three four five and then in the last stitch we're going to do a single crochet increase so two single crochets and that is the end of row seven now for row eight we are going to be doing a single crochet in each of the stitches and there's going to be 27 stitches but remember because we did use the front loop of the previous stitch we're going to be using the back loop for this round so just follow carefully and I promise you'll be okay. <laughs> okay, what we're gonna do is five single crochets. One, two, three, four, five. And this is where the stitch markers come in handy because these are the spaces where we're gonna have the next two single crochets, okay? And I'm just gonna remove the stitch marker and then single crochet in that stitch. It's one and then remove the next stitch marker and then two. There we go. And now remember we did a single crochet increase. We're gonna just do a single crochet in each of the stitches. So in the front of the face, we're gonna have 11 single crochets in total. So remember to skip the stitches we did for the wing and go directly into the single crochet increase. You might have to twist your hook a little bit, but there's one and two, and the remaining nine. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're gonna have the other single crochet increase and do two single crochets there. So one and two. Now we are at the wing on the other side and same thing, we're gonna do a single crochet in each of the back loops. So there's one, and then two. It might take a little bit of time at first to really identify where the spaces are, but once you practice and get the hang of it, you'll be able to see them for sure. And now for the rest of the row, we're gonna do seven single crochets, one in each single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's the end of row eight, and this is how it should look with the wings. Now let's move on to row number nine. This row is super easy. It is just single crochet all around, and we'll end up with 27 single crochets. And that is the end of row 9. For row 10, we are going to do some increases. And what's going to be is going to be 8 single crochet, increase, 8 single crochet, increase, 8 single crochet, increase. 
So in total, at the end, we're going to have 30 single crochets. Let me show you once. We'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then single crochet increase. So two single crochets in the next space. And we're going to do that two more times until the end of the row. That is the end of row 10. For row 11, we're just going to do a single crochet all around and we'll end up with 30 single crochets. That is the end of row 11. Now would be a good time to make the face. So get your safety eyes as well as your tapestry needle and some of that mustard yarn. I'm just gonna cut off about like 15 centimeters of the yarn, which will be used to embroider the mouth. Okay, so this part, I like to do it in a very specific place. You can do that, you don't have to, but I'll show you how I determine where to put the eyes first. So we're gonna start have the body facing you. You'll know which one is the front because the ending of the row will be in the back and we want to count six rows. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And you want to put your eyes between row six and row seven right here. And the way that you calculate where to place them is that if you, it might be a bit tricky to see, but if you recall, you did a single, cr single crochet increase here and here. So on row six, I start at the space that I did the single crochet increase. Maybe I'll use this to show you, which is right here. And then I'm going to go in two spaces right here so this is where you're gonna place one of the eyes here and then you do the same on the other side so this is the single where you made the single crochet increase so from here you're gonna go in twice so right here is where you're gonna put the eye and you are going to have four single crochet spaces, four single crochets in between the eyes. And then the mouth will be going between the middle two single crochets. But first, let's attach the eyes. That took a lot of calculation for me to determine the cutest spot for the eyes. But of course, you can, you don't have to do it there, but this is how I like to do it. So these are the eyes. Now we're gonna take the mustard yarn, put it onto the tapestry needle, and then we are going to go around twice in those two spaces. So start from the inside. Make sure you leave a little tail inside. Go through. And if you want, you can leave it at that, but I like to go one more time and I put it either under or over. So don't put it on top of each other. You want to look like kind of lips or like a beak, if that makes sense. So like that. So you can see how it's like a little, little beak. And then we will flip it over and tie it on the inside. Don't tie it too tight because you don't want the mouth to look too tight but tie it enough that it maintains its shape. And it's so cute. Okay, so that is the finished face. 
Now we'll continue on with the decreases. We're going to start decreasing at row 12. And what we're going to do is we're going to do three single crochets and then a decrease. And we will be doing this six times all around. And we're going to end up with 24 single crochets at the end. I like to use the invisible decrease method, which I'll show you, but you can use whatever decrease method you'd like. I just think it looks a lot cleaner this way. So we're going to do three single crochets, one, two, three, and then for the invisible decrease, what we do is we take the front loop of the next two stitches. So grab the front loop, grab the second front loop. And then we're going to make it like a normal single crochet. So pull that loop, wrap around, pull all the way. So you just made a invisible decrease. And then we will continue. And that is the end of row 12 and you'll have 24 stitches on all around. From here I would recommend that you start stuffing a little bit because we are going to continue with our decreases and add the feet. Just stuff enough that it's like full but you don't want it to be interfering with your next row. For row 13, we are going to be doing more decreases and also adding the foot. And this is a no-sew pattern as you know, so we are going to be using the bobble stitch for the feet and we're going to be using mustard. So we're going to start off by doing a decrease. So invisible decrease and then a single crochet and then another decrease and a single crochet and one more invisible decrease now here is where you're going to have your first foot what you're going to do is you're going to take your mustard yarn and you're going to pretend like you're looping it over the hook and that's going to be the first loop and we're going to do a bobble stitch which is where you pretend to do you do like three double crochets but you don't complete it right before you finish the f right before you're about to finish it you start the next one if you've never done this before this is how it looks like so you're going to wrap around the mustard yarn go through the next stitch wrap around pull two loops as if you're doing a double crochet but but instead of doing the last step we're going to start a new double crochet so wrap around the hook insert the hook pull through pull two loops and now we're gonna have three loops and we're gonna do one more faux double crochet so around pull through loop two now we're gonna have four stitches and we're gonna take back the yellow yarn and we're going to do pull through all four stitches like that now we're going to continue with a single crochet, decrease, single crochet, decrease. So single crochet, and then a decrease. Another single crochet, and another decrease. Like that. And now we are going to continue using the same mustard yarn and do the same thing we're gonna do a bobble stitch and we're going to have four loops remaining on our hook and when we have four loops we are going to take back the yellow yarn loop around and pull through all four loops and then to continue we're going to do an, again single crochet decrease Another single crochet decrease and finally we're going to do a decrease in the last two stitches and you'll be left with 16 stitches all around 
and you can just tuck in the mustard yarn. And we'll just continue stuffing until you get the desired size and look of your plushie. For the final row, it's really easy. We're just going to do single crochet decreases all around and you'll be left with eight single crochets. There's one. Two. Now cut off a long tail for weaving in the ends. You can remove the stitch marker and then continue stuffing until you like the shape. So I finished stuffing my little chick and now we're going to sew up the bottom. Again, you can use whatever method you like, but for me, I just like to go into the front loops of all the stitches around. So go through the front loop from the outside in, pull, and do that all around. Last one, just kind of put the needle out from the other end and then make a little loop and then go through that loop and that's just going to kind of like tie it all together. Then you can just kind of pull it out another end and cut it off. And there you have it, that's your completed check. Isn't it so cute? Now we're going to move on to making the Christmas tree hat and I'm using the emerald color from Premier Parfait Chunky when the white and I'm also using the same yellow as the chick. You're actually going to need also a smaller hook. I use number 6 or 3.5 millimeters and that's for the star. Okay, let's start off by making the tree. We're gonna start with our number eight hook, our five millimeter hook. And we're gonna start off by making a slip knot and then chain two. In the hat, we don't really need the stitch markers because we're not doing continuous rounds. We're gonna do a slip stitch and a chain one connector for each round so that the hat is like more like even, if that makes sense. You'll see what I mean when we go through. Anyways, we did the two chains, and then in this, we're gonna skip the first one, and we're gonna skip the second one, I mean, the one closest to the loop. We're gonna go to the one further away, and we're gonna make four single crochets. So one, two, three, four. Then we are going to go back into the first single crochet that we made. So it might actually be helpful to use a stitch marker. And we're going to do a slip stitch and then a chain one. And that's going to connect the rounds together. Now for round two, we are going to go back into the same space where we did the slip stitch. Then we're going to do increases all around. So we're going to do two single crochets, one, two, and then two more single crochets, two more, and last two. And we're going to have eight single crochets, and then again, we're going to go back into the first single crochet, do a slip stitch. Uh, chain. 
we're gonna do that all around so I won't really say it anymore, but you just assume that that's what we do for each round. For round three, we are going to do one single crochet and then increase all around. So we're gonna have 12 stitches. Now the next row, we are only going to be using the back loops because later on we're going to be using the front loops to make the snow. So what we're going to do here is that again, we go into the same stitch but only using the back loop and we're going to just single crochet all around. Next row, we're going to do two single crochet, one increase all the way around, and we'll have 16 stitches in the end. We are going to do one single crochet, increase, and then two single crochets. And we're going to do that all the way around. So one single crochet, increase, and then two single crochets. Essentially, I'm just trying to stagger the increases so that it's more circular, but we are making, we're gonna have 20 stitches at the end of this row. So single crochet, increase, two single crochets. Single crochet, increase, two single crochets. And again, for this row, we are going to be using the back loops only and doing single crochets all the way across. We're going to do 20 single crochets. Next row, we are going to do three, no, four single crochets increase. So we're going to have 24 stitches in the end.
finally we're going to do one single crochet increase and then four single crochets again we're staggering the single crochets and we're going to end up with 28 at the end single crochet, increase, and then four single crochets. Actually, before you complete the last single crochet, you are going to switch to the white yarn. So, white yarn, and then we're going to do that connecting again. Now we're going to do the rim, and how that's going to look is that we're going to only use the front loops, and we're going to do, we're going to alternate between single crochet and increase. So we're going to do, and I like to use yarn over here. So yarn over, single crochet, and then increase. And do that all the way across. And this is kind of like emulating snow, which I think is super cute. So now you can cut it off, you can cut off both colors actually, and then we just need to, I like to go through the first single crochet, pull it through, and then pull it through the back loop of the last single crochet, so that kind of makes an even end. So we can weave this through, but first let's make the snow on the other parts of the hat. So the reason why we use just the back loop for rows 4 and 7, I believe, is that we're going to use these front loops to make the snow. So it doesn't really matter where you start, and it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but I like to use the same, go in the same place as where we ended off so that it's all the ends are in the same place. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the first front loop and we're going to hook our white yarn. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with a chain and then in the next loop we're going to do a slip, uh, slip stitch. Duh. And then all the way across, we're going to just do one chain, one slip stitch, one chain, one slip stitch until we get to the end.
Okay, we're at the end and I'm gonna go back into the same stitch where I um, started and do a final slip stitch. You can cut off the yarn, pull through, and I just like to make a little loose double knot here. And we're going to do the same thing here, I think between rows 3 and rows 4, <clears throat> the exact same thing. And if you find it hard to know where to put the snow, um, I should have said this earlier, but you can also put a um, stitch marker to indicate where exactly we have to put the snow. So there is the snow, and the last thing we need to do, aside from weaving in the end, is to make Hi, this is Editing Julianne. I'm so top. sorry, but I was completely out of frame when filming the star, so I had to refilm. So apologies for the different lighting, but I hope it's much clearer. For this star, I like to use a smaller hook so it doesn't isn't too, too big. And we're going to leave a longer loop because we're going to need this to kind of attach it to the, the tree. We're going to make another slip knot and chain two. One, two. And what we're going to do is we're going to do five single crochets. back into the first single crochet, do a slip stitch, and then chain two, and in the first chain, the one further away from the hook, we're going to do a slip stitch, like that. And then we're going to go into the next single crochet, do a slip stitch, two six chains, and then slip stitch again. And we're going to do that all the way across until we have five little pointy tips of the star. cute little star and we will be attaching it to the top of the tree it's so cute oh my gosh okay to do that first I tie a knot in the back and try to keep the knot kind of towards the bottom in between the bottom two little points there's no like really perfect way to do this. You can honestly even glue on the star, that is an option. But I'm gonna show you how I sew it just in case you don't have the proper glue or you just want to sew it. So we're gonna make sure that this is the back and the front of the star faces the front. What we're gonna do is that we're going to, if you can, eh, let's use a tapestry needle. If you have a bit of a bigger one, that's better, like I have one like this. So we're going to loop both ends and we're going to stick it through the top, the very top of the tree. Okay, and then just turn it so that this is the back and this is the back of the star and the front of the tree has the front of the star. And now you can use one of the, your smaller needles and 
between rows one and two, you're going to take the needle and essentially what you're gonna do, you're gonna attach this point here and this point here. the point of the star to the front and then we are going to take one of the yellow ends and pull it through like this and then we're going to do the same on the other side probably easier to just glue it but <laughs> yellow okay kind of like here pull it through okay and now we're just gonna pull it back through the same space that you brought it in and this will secure the star to the tree like this And on the inside, we're just going to tie a knot. Perfect. Let's just flip this all the way inside out so that we can tie this knot here. And then we can weave in all the other ends. Basically, here we already tied it. So we can just, you don't have to weave it, you can just cut it off, but just to be on the safe side, I'm just going to weave it a little bit through the hat. There is your completed Christmas tree hat. So that was a tutorial for the chick and the Christmas tree hat. So if you want to learn how to make the penguin with the Santa hat, you can check out part two of this tutorial. I'll have it linked below or above. I'm not sure yet. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe because my channel is still super small and I'd love it to grow as much as possible this year and next year. So make sure to subscribe and support. Thank you so much and see you next time.